Uh, it's good. All right, so I'm Yao Liang, I'm from CMU, and today I will be presenting our work on closed form training of uh, Mahalanobis distance for supervised classrooms. This is a joint work with uh, Mark Lau, uh, Matthew Cold, and Eric Singh. So, clustering, as we all know, uh, is to group uh, uh, is to group uh, similar objects, and uh, the challenge is, of course, uh, the notion of similar objects is highly subjective, and it is usually very hard for the algorithm to figure this out just by itself. And one uh, extremely popular algorithm is for clustering is the K-means algorithm. And in a nutshell, the K-means algorithm first selects. Uh, a few centroids, and in this toy example I'm showing you, there are three centroids. And then uh, the Cummings algorithm will assign uh, the, the data points to the nearest centroid, and then you recompute the centroids and you iterate until uh, convergence. So clustering is usually thought to be art more than you know uh, uh, science, and there are at two reasons for that. First. Uh, most clustering algorithms usually depend on a similarity measure. And as I mentioned before, this is highly subjective. And the remedy for this is usually uh, you can try to learn uh, the metric. And there has been a, a number of works uh, in both the machine learning community and also the computer vision community. And the second reason is uh, the objective or the goal of a clustering algorithm uh, may not, you know, uh, truthfully reflect our uh, the reality. For instance, the mean square error in in the k-means algorithm may not reflect the reality. And the the remedy is you can try to provide some form of supervision for the algorithm. And in this week, we try to learn a metric for supervised clustering. And so our uh, goal is to adopt a learning perspective for the clustering problem. So here we have uh, m training pairs. Each x is a group of objects that we try to cluster, and c i is the true uh, uh, clustering for these objects. And the goal, of course, is to learn a prediction function f such that when we have a new test set of objects, we can apply this prediction function to produce its uh, desired uh, clustering. And the prediction function here is a k-means or under a learned matrix M. So to be more precise, uh, the prediction function for our work uh, is in the following form. Here X uh, is as before, it's a group of objects. And M is a positive uh, semi-definite matrix that encodes a Mahalanobis distance that we try to learn. And the curve L here is the set of all uh, possible clustering under our consideration. And in particular, if you set, you fix M to be the identity matrix, then this is nothing but the k-means algorithm using the Euclidean distance as a similarity measure. And the goal of our work, of course, is to uh, try to learn a better distance matrix M such that k-means will perform uh, better. So once we fix uh, the prediction function, uh, the, the overall formulation is uh, uh, quite straightforward. So basically we try to find a distance metric M such that our prediction CI hat is close to the true clustering CI, at least over the training set. And by minimizing this, uh, this differences, we, we hope uh, the algorithm will generalize well to the death test set. Uh, so even though the formulation is quite straightforward, but computationally uh, it seems uh, very challenging. For, uh, and this is known as a bi-level programming. And the challenging is the constraints uh, in our problem is yet another optimization problem. So we have two level of optimization problems. And in the past, there have been some work which tries to uh, relax the problem uh, to a convex formulation. And then you can solve the Linux convex formulation using some iterative algorithms. And the this, uh, slight disadvantage of this approach is these algorithms are usually iterative, uh, meaning that they, are, uh, they need a lot of iterations and it is slow and cannot scale to large data sets. So our work is uh, we, we try to provide a very simple solution to this problem. And uh, the observation here is First, assuming that there is only one training uh, pair, 
So I know this is a very unrealistic assumption, but bear with me for a minute. So assuming there's only one training uh, example, then we can show that the, uh, the bilevel programming I'm showing you here uh, has an exact closed form solution, even though it's a non complex problem, we can prove that there is a closed form solution, provided that K is the number of clusters, uh, uh, is upper bound of the two ground truths. And if, if uh, K is not upper bound, it's a lower bound, uh, again, the, uh, we, 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 we have a closed form, it's just a slightly more complicated. Okay, so now the advantage of this uh, closed form is uh, it is uh, very computationally efficient and also it's a globally optimal solution. And the disadvantage, of course, is uh, we, in this uh, theorem we can only we are assuming uh, we assume there is only one training period, which is uh, unrealistic for a learning approach. So the general question is: uh, when we have more than one training example, can we still solve the binevel uh, formulation of the classroom problem? And in general, it turns out uh, it is uh, very hard to solve the problem exactly. And here, what we did is to use a very simple uh, reduction scheme. Basically, what we did is uh, we concatenate all training examples into a uh, so-called super uh, training example. And then we can apply the closed form uh, solution in the previous slide. And uh, of course, this is only a very crude approximation of the general problem. But as we show in the uh, experiments, it is actually quite reasonable in a number of applications. So just to recap uh, for the whole procedure, uh, first we concatenate all training uh, examples into one super training example, and then we derive uh, in close form the, the, the uh, Mahana Mobius metric, uh, and then we can apply this metric in the test set. And if you, you if if needed, you can also run k-means to uh, run the solution. And in, uh, in our paper, we also showed that. This approach has a very interesting connection to regression problems, which is surprising, and uh, in, in retrospect, it is not that surprising in the sense that because you have full supervision, so in the end, one, one way or another, you're bound to do some regression. Uh, also, in, if we have only two clusters, we, we have a simplified uh, uh, for, uh, result for, the, for this uh, problem. So if you want to know more details, please come to the poster. Okay, so we have conducted some experiments to verify this uh, very simple uh, solution. And in the first uh, toy example I'm showing you here, we create, we randomly generate some uh, three clusters of data points. It's shown in the uh, upper left. And if you apply k-means with the uh, Euclidean distance as the similarity measure, uh, it will form the body, as you see uh, in the upper right uh, figure. What, uh, and if you use the metric that learned by our algorithm, uh, it will uh, correctly uh, find the clusterings. And in the uh, bottom right, what I'm showing you is a projection of the data points using the learned metric. And you can see uh, in the learned metric that the data points are sort of more uh, uh, spread out yeah, with, their own, uh, with the right uh, clustering. All right, then the next experiment we, we did is on foreground and background segmentation. And we applied these to two data sets. One is the horses data set, and the other is the Oxford uh, Flower 17 data set. So in each data set we use, because these data sets, these are image data sets coming with the ground two segmentation. So in each case, we choose 200 training, uh, 200 images as training examples. And in this example, we have two clusters, one is foreground, the other is background. And here, in this figure, I'm showing you the, a few examples. So the first, uh, we have three, uh, in the first column is the uh, original image in these data sets. And the second column is the ground truth of, uh, a ground truth segmentation of these images. And the third and fourth column are the results uh, produced by our algorithm. Uh, so we have, uh, as I said, if k equals 2, we have a simplification. So that's why you see uh, two results of our exam. And in, each, uh, in these examples, uh, the classroom that we produced are fairly close to the ground truth. We also try to compare 
uh, quantitatively with other uh, methods that has been proposed in the past. So, uh, the uh, in the in the top part of the table, what right, you see is the results on the whole data set, and uh, the bottom part is on the flower data set. And uh, overall, our eggs achieve uh, uh, better uh, classroom performance, and uh, uh, more importantly, it's much more efficient. For instance, uh, the impact normalized cut is a very uh, popular uh, segmentation method. It does not require training at all. That's why it does, uh, the training time is almost zero. Uh, but its performance is not in the worst than us. Okay. So the final experiment that we did is on dynamic texture segmentation. So this is uh, a data set uh, with uh, video textures. Uh, these are grayscale uh, video textures with uh, 12 different textures. So in this case, the number of class of K is equal to 12. And we evaluate the algorithms using uh, the RAND index. Basically, it's the higher the RAND index is, the algorithm is better. So this is uh, so in this table. What I'm showing you is a comparison with some state-of-the-art uh, algorithm for this problem. In particular, we compare with uh, Tani et al. So this is published last year at, C at CVPR. So we achieve similar accuracy with this method, but our algorithm is uh, uh, far efficient. So to summarize, uh, so we have proposed a closed form solution for bi-level formulation of the supervised clustering problem, and it's very easy to implement and also uh, it's computationally efficient. So we have obtained a uh, comparative clustering performance on two standard benchmark datasets. Thank you for your attention.